Imagine you are a young man or woman living in rural China. There are no jobs, so you are forced into the city to work. Now, what about your children? You could choose to take them with you, but government restrictions means that they will not be able to attend schools where you live or visit a state doctor. So, what do you do? For the parents of 70 million rural Chinese children, the answer is to leave them behind for grandparents to take care of. This 70 million total is almost the same number of all the children in the United States. We call these children China's LBCs, or China's Left Behind Children. China is now synonymous with growth and prosperity. However, what is often unrecognized by the public is the other China, or the rural parts of China that are often blurred by the country's economic successes. With stagnant rural development coupled with a lack of government intervention or attention. The plight of China's poor is extremely apparent in the rural countryside. Prior research done in rural China has shown that a substantial percentage of left-behind children were anemic, which is a condition in which there is a deficiency in red blood cells and iron, and suffering from cognitive and/or psychomotor delays, while only a relatively small percentage were stunted or underweight. This discrepancy suggests that these left-behind children are getting enough food. Just not the right kinds of food, which is leading to micronutrient deficiencies. Such deficiencies can have long-term impacts on a child's mental development, educational potential, as well as economic potential. Now, in order to get to the root of this problem, we must take into consideration the factors that could potentially contribute to malnutrition among these children. I've always been interested in health, so during my internship this summer, I conducted interviews with rural Chinese families to further investigate these issues. When first posed this problem, I thought, "Oh yeah, they probably just don't have access to healthy foods in the countryside. No wonder these children are getting sick." As it turns out, these families actually rely on a combination of both homegrown and bought foods from local vendors. According to these families, it is actually quite convenient for them to acquire healthy fruits and vegetables. So it makes us wonder: Why are these children getting sick if accessibility is not a problem? Let's see if we can find a trend in the foods eaten throughout the day in a typical northern rural Chinese household. Meals often consist of rice porridge, mo, which is a type of steamed bun, and a big bowl of noodles with only a little bit of vegetables and meats on top. I see one obvious trend here: everything is white. There is little color from vegetables or meats in their predominantly starch-based diet. With the lack of iron-rich foods such as dark leafy greens and red meats, it is no wonder that these children are not getting the essential micronutrients needed for proper development. At the same time, there is a general lack of understanding among caregivers about anemia and the toll it can take on their infant's development. They don't know what the symptoms or effects of anemia are, or the steps needed to treat their anemic child. Intergenerational parenting, meaning when the grandparents must fill in for parents who have gone elsewhere for work, only exacerbates this issue because the elder generations often have a more traditional mindset in terms of taking care of children. In fact, a grandmother I interviewed said, "There's no effect. Eating, sleeping, playing, whatever—they're all fine." When addressing the so-called trivial effects of anemia, the grandmother has the illusion of a perfectly healthy grandchild. In truth, the lack of proper dietary nutrients could compromise a child's cognitive development, leading them to le leading to them to have a harder time focusing in school and later impair their future success. This is what we call the invisible problem. When families live on a predominantly starch-based diet. They are feeding their children an abundance of carbohydrates, fueling them with the energy to grow. Children are eating until they are full, not until they are nourished. Therefore, while these children are getting taller and taller, they are simultaneously growing more and more unhealthy. The symptoms of anemia are invisible, meaning you cannot diagnose them just by looking at a child. Therefore, parents often fail to recognize that their children may be suffering from micronutrient deficiencies, and th these caregivers' illusion. Of a perfectly healthy child exists, 
And this is dangerous because it could allow an invisible problem to continue to grow without attention. The poor quality of healthcare in rural China only worsens this problem. Doctors who work in local health centers are often unqualified doctors who receive low pay, have low incentive to work, and have little expertise in their field. In an observational study done in rural China, only 35% of doctors were able to correctly diagnose the condition of a caregiver's child. This is because most of the skilled doctors are in the big cities working for bigger hospitals that provide better pay. And in one of the households I visited, I actually witnessed a local doctor walk in on a woman breastfeeding, just like it was his home, and began to smoke freely right in front of the baby. A mother even said, the hospital isn't very good. If we went to the hospital, my, my, my child might get sick in another way. The probability of becoming even more sick at the doctors was sometimes higher than the probability of receiving adequate care in these low-quality health centers. So why should we care? How is this problem related to us? This is not just a problem prevalent in China. There is actually a large population of left-behind children in the rural parts of Taiwan as well. More and more parents are going into the city to work, leaving their children behind for grandparents to take care of, creating a cycle that only parallels with that of rural China. Evidently, the number of left-behind children growing up in unstable environments and growing up in, in, and living unhealthy lifestyles is only increasing. In a perfect world, malnutrition would not be an issue and parents would be able to care for their child directly. However, the reality is that there is no simple formula for it to solve an issue as complex as this. But we can at least work to alleviate this problem by raising awareness for this issue that is present not only in rural China, but back home as well. There are several organizations in Taiwan, such as the Alliance Foundation, CTBC, as well as CATHE, that work directly with rural families to try to better their circumstances. We can choose to donate to or volunteer for these programs to, to help rural parents work closer to home. This way, they can be present during their children's formative years and allow them to have healthier futures. And while this problem is much bigger than just charity or volunteering, it is better to make progress than to leave these children behind. Thank you.